In this video, we learn how to use StatCrunch to perform the independent sample t-test. The independent sample t-test is used to compare the means from two independent samples. In our first example, we perform an independent sample t-test to compare the white blood cell counts of males and females. To do this, open the white blood cell counts data set in StatCrunch and then go to Stat T stats to sample with data. Select the columns for each of the samples. So our sample one will be the males. Our sample two will be the females. For the calculation options, I'm going to deselect the pool variances. It's not the way we did it in class. So to be consistent with the methods we used in class, I'll just unselect that. Then to perform the significance test, I want to see if the two are equal. So I will check to see if the difference is equal to zero. This is the default in StatCrunch, and I will just accept it. I also need to choose the form of the alternative hypothesis. In this case, I want to do a two-sided test, so the not equals is the correct option. And then I can press Compute. And now I have the results of this test. The test statistic is negative 0.947, and we have a p-value of 0.348. This is a rather large p-value, and it means that the differences in the white blood cell counts of males and females is not statistically significant. In our second example, we perform an independent sample t-test to compare the number of years of education obtained by males and females. To do this, open the Years of Education data set in StatCrunch. In this case, you'll notice that the data is stored in a data frame. The Years of Education of both the males and the females are stored in a single column, and the genders of the participants are stored in a separate column. When performing the independent sample t-test in StatCrunch, the data must be stored in separate columns. To separate the years of education of the males and females, go to Data, Arrange, Split. Select the years of education, and then we will split on the gender variable. Press Compute, and now we see that two additional columns have been added to the table, the female years of education and the male years of education. If I scroll down in this data set, I will see that these two columns are a little shorter than the first two columns okay, because I've separated out the males and the females into separate columns. And now we can perform the independent sample t-test in the usual way. Go to stat, t-stats, to sample, with data. For my first sample, I will select the female years of education. For the second sample, I will select the male years of education. I will deselect the pool variances option. I want to perform a significance test to determine if the two means are equal. So I will have the difference of the two means being set equal to zero. And then I need to choose the form of the alternative hypothesis. Again, I will perform a two-sided test, so I will leave this set to not equals. And then I can press compute. In this case, the test statistic works out to be negative 0.132, and we have a p-value of 0.185. The p-value indicates that the difference in the number of years of education of males and females is not statistically significant.